Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Knife, and today I'm sharing a fun orange peel pillow project. Wow, I didn't realize all the alliteration that would be there. But I have a little story about this project, and I have a free pattern for you to make it. I'm going to kind of walk you through it. But first, let me just let you know that I have been wanting to do an orange peel project for a long time. And a few years ago, I did some orange peels for a quilt and I just really wasn't happy with how they turned out. And I just, and ever since then, I had in the back of my mind, you've got to get better at this. You've got to practice this. You've got to make a, an orange peel project. And I've been inspired by some amazing orange peel projects, one by my friend Lisa Alexander and one by my friend Amy Smart. And it just always has been in the back of my mind. So anyway, back in December, that quarter shop contacted me and asked me if I wanted to participate in their quilt goals series for this year. And I said, yes, I have a quilt goal. I want to make an orange peel project. And so I told them in December, I made that commitment and they assigned me the month of April. And here I am with my orange peel project and I did an orange peel pillow. And I can't wait to show you the technique that I used and how much fun making these blocks can be. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first let me just give you a look at the pillow close up. I used our Bountiful Blooms fabric and I had so much fun picking out the different prints that I wanted to use for the peel units. I actually used a few, several different low volume kind of prints for the background and I put them in rows. So this print goes in those three spots. This print, there's four of them. And so you can see how I kind of did that on the diagonal. I do want to mention uh, before I turn it over and show you the back of the pillow that the one thing I kind of wish I had realized was how in focus these four center units were going to be. I sort of concentrated on making my blocks with these four, these four, these four, and then these four. And then after I got my pillow put together, I realized this really is the, the focus of the pillow. So when you're making yours, just make sure that your four favorite prints are front and center. And, and these are fine. I probably wouldn't have put the two ginghams in the same block. I probably would have done that a little bit differently. I probably would have put a, a floral here and maybe the stripe here and another floral here and just had just one of the ginghams. Anyway, I still love the pillow. I did my method on the back where I put a zipper I didn't really have a perfect match for a zipper, but it doesn't, didn't matter because I have the flap covering it. But we do have a video on, on my method for doing this, so you can find that. And you also don't have to put a zipper in the back of your pillow. Our PDF that we have for you just has for a simple envelope back pillow. And we might have a video on that too. If we do, we'll link it. But anyway, I'm gonna show you a little bit about what I did to get these peels, I, I feel like they turned out really well. My corners are crisp, my curves are smooth. I did hand applique them, although you can machine applique them if you want, and that's fine too, but I really, really am happy with how they turned out. So let me get into this and just show you a little bit of my method. First of all, we have a, a two-page PDF for you. And one of them has two templates on it. The larger template is going to be the template that you can use to cut your fabric out. And the smaller one is the template that you are going to use when you actually make your peel units. And they are labeled so, and you've also got a picture of my quilt and how I laid it out. So again, this is really helpful. And then the first page gives you kind of the directions for what I'm going to talk about today. So the first thing that you're going to do is, and I'm going to show you step by step what you're going to need. So I used some spray starch. I used the Mary Ellen's Best Press 
just because that's what I had, but you can use any starch that you like. I just keep this little container in my sewing room for when I need to use starch, and then I wash it out every time. A paintbrush, just anything from a craft store. Uh, I've had this one for probably 10 years. It's been my applique paintbrush. So just any kind of paintbrush. And then Reynolds freezer paper, plastic coated. This is what they use you know, to wrap meats in before they freeze them to help prevent freezer burn. This paper is amazing. I'll show you if you've never used it before. It has a shiny side and a dull side. And you're gonna use the, you're gonna tear off a piece of the paper and you can put it right on top of the PDF that you print out and you're gonna trace just right on the line onto the freezer paper and make several of them. I actually made five or six when I was doing this. And you're going to use this paper template with your freezer paper to make your real template. And that is going to be made out of, believe it or not, a cereal box. Now, I learned this technique from a woman named Amy McClellan, she has the handle under the garden moon. She has a lot of patterns. She used to own a quilt store in uh, Northern Utah. And I think it was called American Quilting. She has since sold it, but she still does retreats and teaches classes and has wonderful, wonderful patterns. Anyway, I was one time teaching at a retreat where she was teaching and I got the opportunity to take an applique class from her and she showed us this method of using the cereal box cardboard for applique templates. And it has been wonderful. So whenever I get a cereal box, I just kind of fold them up like this and I keep them in my cupboard. And this one actually is the one I'm currently using. So I've been tearing little pieces off of it to use and it's what I used for today. But anyway, I just keep these, you know, I usually try to store them flat so I always have some cereal boxes on hand for these templates. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to cut off some cardboard and roughly cut out your applique template and iron it with the shiny side down to your cardboard. So the shiny side of the freezer paper will actually stick to the cardboard. And so once you do that, you have a way to make a really nice sturdy template. And so use scissors that you can use for paper and cut that out. Okay, I'm just gonna show you quickly. One thing I'll talk about while I'm cutting this out is that Amy, when I took that class from her, she even suggested getting some fine grade sandpaper if you really wanted the edges of your template super, super smooth. She used sandpaper. I haven't been that picky on these. I feel like I was able to cut them out pretty smoothly and you know, use my skills of rotating the object. But anyway, this just makes a beautiful, beautiful template. And once you have the template made, you can take the freezer paper off. These, it actually might work again, but to me, then you're shaving off a little bit and getting your templates different size. So I really do like just preparing a few different templates. Okay, so next step is, so as I mentioned, the, this template, I'll just show you on the paper. So the, the cereal box template is going to be cut from the smaller shape and your fabric is going to be cut from the larger shape okay and what that does is that makes it to where you can lay your your cardboard template from your cereal box on top of your fabric and what I do is I spray some of my spray starch in this container and I take the paintbrush and I paint all these outer edges with starch. So you're just gonna, and also I wanna mention, 
You might want to put a towel on your ironing board or have some type of a portable little press thing because you can see that the starch when you're using the iron, it does tend to stain that a little bit. So I've had this mini cut and press. I have another one that's I've used a lot more that has even more stains on it. But basically what I do is I, I really like using this mini because I can set this here, I can paint my starch, and I'm not getting anything on my other surfaces. And then you're going to lay your template down. And then you're going to use your iron and iron it and do all of one side first. And it, it can be hot, so you might want to use a stiletto if you need to, to keep your fingers from burning. But iron the one side. I love being able to flip this board and then iron the other side. And I've got a couple that are ironed. So I'll actually just show you what they look like. So, and I, I did them both ways. Uh, both ways worked fine, so it doesn't really matter which way you have your cereal box. I wanted to show you that. But, uh, so they've both been ironed and starched and, well, starched and then ironed. And what I really like to do, and this is another reason why I like to make a lot of templates, is I like to make five or six of these and let them sit. And that lets the starch dry and get really just a little bit stiff here, which makes it easier to work with later. And then you can remove your template. And these actually sat overnight. I actually got these ready overnight. So they sat overnight. And you can reuse these several times. I was going to show you. I have some that were, they're going to go in the garbage. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. But they're, they're starting to curve. Because maybe if I said, yeah, that, does that show that that's just not flat anymore? So it, it has been very much used. And so once they start curving like that and getting a little bent, I just throw them away and, and make more. So you can see these are still really flat. They've only just each, well, one of them was used more than once, but one of them has only been used once. So anyway, once they start curving, just throw them away and you're done with them. So the next step when you are to this step is to applique it onto your block according to your favorite method. Now, if you're going to hand applique it, I just take the square and I finger press a diagonal line. And I will put those two tips Make sure they're both on the diagonal line. And sometimes I'll even get a ruler and make sure, I mean, you can eyeball it, but or you can also get a ruler and make sure they're perfectly exact. And then I love these Clover applique pins. I will usually put two or three in. And then I just stack them up. And this is just a great portable project. I actually did all of these on my pillow while we were on vacation. In a ho I, my husband went golfing and I was sitting in the hotel room, just having a good time looking out the window at the beautiful snow. And rain and, by the way, he ended up not golfing that day because of the snow and the rain. But anyway, I stack these up and they're just so portable. You can put them in a project bag and take them with you and sew anywhere you want to. I did just want to show you one thing. I'm going to thread a needle and just kind of show you what I do when I get to the end. If you were sewing this by machine, I'll show you that first. What I would do is I would fold that back and it folds back so nicely because of the starch has just given it that extra body. You can also trim a little bit of it. Don't trim too much. It just seems for me that you want a little bit of it under there to just kind of support. But if I were doing this on the machine, I would fold that back right now and maybe stick a pin just like that 
to kind of hold it until I got to that point with my machine. If you're sewing it by hand, I just leave it like this until I get there with the needle. And I'm just gonna really, really quickly show you how I do that. Okay, I'm just gonna show you a little bit about my stitching. We do have a video on this where I show this applique stitch that I use and we show it with some grandmother's flower garden blocks but it's absolutely the same for this and I, I learned to applique I like to say from two probably of the best teachers in the world uh, took class from Lori Holt and then I've also been tutored by Lisa Bonjean for wool applique so really grateful to both of them but I come up with my knot and then I go just right near the edge of the fabric. And then I go straight down and come back up in, a, in between an eighth and a quarter of an inch, depending on how, how much use I think. Like a pillow isn't going to get a ton of wear. Your stitches probably wouldn't have to be as close together. But... I'm just going to show you, take a few stitches. I like to start kind of right there on the side. And then once I get close to the edge, I will just kind of do what I showed you before. I'll just kind of bend it over with my finger and I'll just hold it. I don't, I don't use a pin for that when I'm doing the, the hand applique version. One thing that I will do to keep the point nice and crisp is I will take a stitch right on that point or sometimes just depending on the way my thread works out on either side of the point and I just try to get some stitches really tightly close together here just to make sure that that point really stays down. So I've actually got, I've taken three just within probably an eighth of an inch, but that way I know that this is really, really sewn quite tightly. And so then I'm just going to continue around. I'm going to do the same thing when I get to my other little tail. And I'm, I'm just going to have this, this really beautiful point and have some other, another, you know, one that's finished. So you can just see this is what it looks like. You've got your applique stitches on the back and or, or machine. And after that, it's just putting them together. You put it together and all the instructions are on the pillow. And I, I think this is a, a new thing. I, I think now that I've done the pillow, I think I have the confidence. I think I'm going to decide on some fabrics and make a quilt with this technique. I hope that you'll enjoy making it too. It's, it's not scary. These templates are amazing. I know there's some great template plastic out there too, but honestly, the cereal box works better than anything I've ever seen before. And I'm really grateful for Amy McClellan for teaching me that method in a class several years ago. Okay, so that's it for my orange peel pillow <laughs> project. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about some of the tips and techniques that I really love for making these blocks. Remember, you can find the link to head over to my blog and get the free pattern for this uh, in the description below. If you enjoyed today's video, please share it with a friend, hit the like button, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thanks so much for stopping by.